Let's just take you to our first guest now and the topic that we're going to be discussing. The two major Ethereum network upgrades are slated to take place simultaneously on April 12th. And together, they're called Chapella. Now, that's Shanghai plus Capella. Technically, the Shanghai upgrade is only on the execution side of Ethereum. Capella is a simultaneous upgrade happening on the consensus side. Hence the merging of the two names to Chapella. Joining us to discuss this and more is Ether Capital's CEO, Brian Mosoff. Welcome, Brian. Thanks for having me. And yeah, this is going to be an exciting week uh, for everyone in the Ethereum community. Happy to be here. Yeah, well, we're happy to have you. And that's exactly what I wanted to first start with, just for the basics. Just before we go into specifics, could you explain why this is called Chapella, even though we believe that you prefer calling it just Shanghai? <laughs> I mean, I, th I think high level people can call it whatever, whatever they want. The big news here is that in a post-merge world, right, we've switched over from proof of work to proof of stake in terms of the consensus mechanism. And now it's about, for a lot of people, being able to access liquidity on their staked Ether. Uh, so that's, I think, what most people are paying attention to this week. Institutions, this is going to unlock their ability to participate in the space. Uh, and it's going to be the last piece of a major upgrade uh, from that transition from proof of work to proof of stake right. so everyone's really excited all right so let's talk about ether capital uh, it's a public company based in canada with a long-term goal to become a central business and investment hub for the ethereum ecosystem what are your expectations for the chapella upgrade and and i i noticed your excitement a short while back so i'm, I'm asking this in the context of keeping those fears of a big sell-off in mind so, I mean, Ether Capital, we're, we're a net accumulator of ETH. We believe very much in that ecosystem. We have since day one. Uh, we're staking currently 36,000 ETH off our balance sheet. Uh, we would love to be able to do more, but that requires liquidity. Uh, it's been a long time uh, since the Beacon Chain went live, the, the first... Um, iteration, I suppose, of, of proof of stake back in December of, of 2020. And so this will enable uh, institutions, uh, we consider ourselves, you know, we're, we're public, we think that there's going to be other institutions like us, uh, we want to see more, more participation from this group of investors uh, into staking. And it requires uh, the ability to get liquidity on stake Ether. And, uh, and once this happens, I think you're going to start to see traditional finance begin to move into the space with more confidence. Uh, now that that last piece has has been put in place. Uh, Ether Capital, um, we have no intentions. I know a lot of people are saying that everyone's going to withdraw their staked Ether and just sell into the market. I don't see that happening, at least for us. That's certainly not our intentions. Uh, so this is, this is important and very exciting and I think is going to unlock a new group of investors that have not participated yet in either Ethereum or Ethereum and then uh, helping secure the network. So with the uh Chapella, or, or, or as our grandmothers would say, Chapella to rhyme like Bubla. Um, you can withdraw stake ether, as you said here. Um, ha has that been priced already in the market? I mean, is this basically that you know has has everything that could possibly have happened already happened, or do you, do you see anything bearish or bullish coming up with the upgrade? My suspicion is that this is going to be a, a non-event uh, in terms of price, but a few months down the line, I, I expect you will see more ETH get locked into staking, either from solo stakers, or again, you'll see more maybe structured products come to market. Uh, I think for regulators, this is um, a missing piece of the puzzle. You know, how do you get liquidity on the ETH or the ETH rewards? Uh, that needs to be figured out, how you're going to handle uh, withdrawal keys. There's all sorts of little nuances that are going to be required Required, uh, for structured products, whether they're closed funds or ETFs to come to market. So that'll be exciting to watch. Um, I don't think that this is bearish by any means. I know some people suspect that some of that, uh, I suppose it's about $35 billion of staked ETH right now, uh, that there might be some selling pressure. I don't think so. And the reason I say that is, I think anyone who decided to take on that lack of liquidity for some unknown period of time are long-term believers in Ethereum, like Ether Capital, like me personally, I've been around the space for a decade now. Um, anyone who's staking is not looking for liquidity. They're looking to participate long-term in this ecosystem. They want to support Ethereum. Um, so I think it, it's probably neutral from a, a price standpoint, but long-term going to be quite bullish. I, I, and nothing involving uh, any other tokens, correct? You, you don't see any, anything involving uh, other tokens getting uh, uh, increasing demand with like uh, staking tokens, et cetera. 
I'm not sure. I mean, I, I don't follow too closely the other uh, layer one smart contract mm -hmm. uh, platforms. You see, if you look on a website like stakingrewards.com, that there are substantially higher percentages of the circulating supply staked on those networks. So what that means for Ethereum, that's relatively low by comparison. Maybe 15% of the circulating supply is being staked. Does that move up to 25 or 30%? Possibly. Uh, and again, that'll put... Uh, uh, price pressure on whatever's being traded on the exchanges because most people I think are going to take a long-term view to ETH. They're going to stake it. They want to use the asset in a productive way. And if you can generate somewhere between three and 6% return, you should do that and just have a low time preference on the asset. So th this is going to be interesting to watch. So, you know, the other thing we've been thinking about and wanting to ask you a question around is that we know that the SEC thinks of Ether as a security and that the CFTC thinks of it as a commodity. So what are traders and businesses generally supposed to do? Uh, should they be staking Ether under this uncertain climate? I mean, we'll, we'll see how that discussion plays out. I don't think it matters too much to the network. What it will affect is how the asset is offered to retail investors, what the access points are going to be, uh, what type of disclosures or obligations from a regulatory standpoint uh, they would have to investors or whichever regulatory body is going to oversee them. I think, again, for people who recognize that it's a global asset, it's a global ecosystem, it shouldn't matter um, what it's, it's bucketed as. And I think that's one of the exciting things about this asset class is how global it is, that it, it doesn't really matter what the political whim is of, of one jurisdiction. Maybe it will in the short term, but long term, again, you know, the whole point is that these networks are going to be credibly neutral. They have to be for them to succeed. Uh, and so, again, the investors who understand that and just want to participate in the long term um, building out of this ecosystem uh, should go and, and build a position and, and stake it and, you know, let whichever regulator wants to oversee the exchanges sort that sort that out amongst themselves yeah i guess uh, the question is does ether capital also have the same view like is that your strategy because back in november uh, of 2022 you'd issued a statement about reassuring investors on the company's handling of its assets and financial strength in response to the latest developments surrounding of course that cryptocurrency exchange that we know of called ftx now so the basic question is how are you navigating crypto winter uh, for us, I mean, we're a lean team, so we don't have a high head count. Uh, we put out that statement just for clarity because a lot of investors, again, were public. So we had people reaching out saying, did we have exposure? Were we holding assets with them? Uh, it's an unfortunate event, of course, for the entire industry. Uh, but we do self-custody. We run a multi-sig uh, with a number of the directors and members of management. And um, because we have uh, a lean team and, and a big treasury that we're staking, uh, we're generating a fair amount of revenue just through helping secure the network. And you know, when we're at the end of the bear market, not sure, but we're long on the space and we'll survive and we hope others do too. And, and we're just happy to be around and, and want to see what happens over the next decade. Good to know. Good to know that you'll survive. That's a big statement to make these days. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Appreciate Thank it. That was you. Brian Mosoff, Ether Capital CEO.